Rob here, and today we're going to talk about adding details to your stories. In the previous episode, we talked about what stories are, and how they're ways to share our knowledge and our experiences with others, and how each story has three basic components. A subject, which is going to be a person or thing, also known as a noun. An action, which is something that happens to that person or thing. Action words in English are also called verbs. And a result, which is what happens after that action is over or the result of that action happening. Of course, if you just have a character, an action, and a result, that's pretty simple and maybe even a bit boring. So we have to spice it up a little bit more with details. Details are what makes stories interesting, and the more details, the better. Why are details important? Well, let's look at an example to find out. Mary baked a cake that wowed all her guests. Go, Mary. But ask yourself, Could you do what Mary did based on just that sentence? No? Well, how about this then? Mary baked a lemon cake with frosted icing that wowed all her guests. That's a bit better. Now we know that a lemon cake combined with frosted icing works well together, but it still doesn't tell us a lot of important details. Who were her guests? What ingredients did she use? Where did she cook it? When did she take it out? Why did the guests like it? And how did she prepare those ingredients? All of these are important questions the audience needs to know to get the same results Mary did. And without knowing these things, it becomes pretty difficult to learn anything from this story. We can make guesses, but the point of stories is to share information. So the more details we have to work with, the better, because it allows us to understand more about the situation and know what we do in that situation. Let's look at another one. Bill studied for his history test and passed with a perfect score. This is great for Bill, but again, could you do what Bill did based on just that information? The answer is probably not, because that story, while complete as a story, lacks details. Who did he study with? What did Bill study? Where did Bill study? When did Bill study? Why did Bill study what he did? And how did Bill study? The more we know, the more useful the story becomes. This is why our brains don't just want details, they crave them, like we crave junk food. Details are the sweet stuff that our brains love, because they help us to figure out what's useful and what's not, and they give us more of that survival information. You know, the stuff that kept bears from eating our ancestors. So, what details do you need to include in a story to make it work? Well, the simplest way to add detail to a story, and start to make it interesting, is by using the 5WH method, which is a method writers have been using for a long time when they plan their stories, and you can too. How does it work? That's the best part. You already know it. You just need a little help remembering. To use the 5WH method, you just need to answer the following questions. 1. Where does the story happen? 2. When does this story take place? 3. Who's involved? 4. Why do the characters do what they do? 5. What happens? What goes wrong? Or right for that matter? 6. How does it all turn out? Let's look at an example based on Bill's story. The original sentence was, Bill studied for his history test and passed with a perfect score. Let's see if we can't add a few details, shall we? Bill, who wanted to get a good score on his history test. Why? So we recopied out his notes at home, where, had a group study session with his friends after class, when, and asked the teacher some extra questions, what. As a result, he got a perfect score on the test. How it all turned out. Now could you do what Bill did and get a good score? I bet you could, and I bet anyone could. Now you have learned from Bill's story and learned from his example. It also became a lot more interesting, and that's because we naturally become curious when we see a character with a goal. A question automatically pops into our heads. How will this person complete this goal? And then we pay attention to find out. That's called a dramatic question, and we'll talk about those another time. Also, you might notice that not all of those questions are answered in the same order as above, and that's totally okay. Also, some questions might be answered more than once, and that's okay too. 
The important thing is that you answer as many of them as you can because the more details you bring, the more interesting and useful the people will find the story. Which brings us to our final questions of the day. What details do you include and how many details should there be? These are not easy questions to answer because they will change with each story. But usually the answer is that you should include as many details as you can. But only the details that are important to understanding the point of the story. So, if the point of the story is how you can get a great test score like Bill did, then the details of the story are going to be about things related to his studies. They're not going to be how he slept with his cat, or sang karaoke, or how he asked his classmate on a date. Those might be things that happened while he was studying for the test, but they're not really relevant to the story. If we add them to the story, you can see that all they do is clutter the story and make it confusing and unclear to the reader what the story is about. But if we get rid of those unneeded parts, suddenly the story all becomes clear. So to review, stories need details like fish need water and you need air. They give them life. Use these key questions to guide you and they will help you every time. They're incredibly useful. Use them whenever possible and only include the details the story needs to make it clear and easy to follow. Do this and you can tell a good story. A great story, that needs something more. And we'll talk about that in the coming episodes. Good night folks, happy writing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel as I'll be releasing more videos in this series and you don't want to miss out. If you want to support the channel, check out my books. They're chock full of storytelling goodness and can help you become a better writer. Thanks again. See you next time.